Welcome to Joyful Sober. Um, this is a series of conversations with artists, entrepreneurs, parents, and unflinching people who think the topic of eliminating or reducing booze is worth having a chat about. Um, I'm your host, Alison Lassick, and today I'm going to be talking to non-alcoholic drinks connoisseur and sober socialite, Amy Armstrong. <laughs> Um, but first, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of, on, of the lands where we live, work and record this conversation today. So the Boon Wurrung and the Wiradjuri people of the Kulin Nation and the Gunditjmara of southwestern Victoria. So by making it a priority to share our stories here, we're participating in a tradition that dates back more than 60,000 years. So I'd like to pay my deepest respects to elders past, present and emerging and give a huge shout out to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders who might be listening to our conversation. Um, so thanks and welcome Amy. Amy's on a mission to share everything she's learned on her journey to sobriety, which features a lot of amazing craft made booze free options. So I'm pretty excited to have her on the line to chat about life without alcohol. Um, yeah, Amy, can you tell us a little bit about Dry But Wet and what inspired you to become a non-alcoholic drinks reviewer, blogger and all-round squeaky wheel? I, I, I preferred connoisseur. Which oh, yeah. Is, I mean, that was um, a first. <laughs> but I'm probably going to own that. I love that now. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, so Dry But Wet began when I myself was just gone a, on a journey to find a really decent uh, red wine replacement um, because, you know, red wine was my poison of choice and I was literally just buying bottle after bottle after bottle and making notes in my phone about what was good and what wasn't and um, getting increasingly frustrated. But a girlfriend knew that I was doing that and said, look, you should make this you need to share this information because there's mm. no point in just you having it. You need to start an Instagram account. So I was like, oh, what? And she, yep, do it, righto. So she, there, that, that day was all set up. My husband came up with the name it was, and then Dry But Wet was born with the intention of um, just reviewing drinks and sharing, sharing that knowledge. Um, I wasn't really heavily in the Instagram sober space much at that time um myself like i hadn't engaged in that space really that much and i um was just amazed at how quickly what i was doing grew and and got picked up on um so after a couple of months of doing doing that and just reviewing in in that space um i had people start asking me could i collate these you know they were finding it they were missing things and finding it hard to compare like with like my okay, righto, uh, I'll start a spreadsheet maybe and share that. And then I thought, no, that looks a bit poxy. You can't really put a spreadsheet out into the into the world. <laughs> it's needed, you know, as much as we love spreadsheets, it's not really a presentable way of showing information. So then I took another leap and um, set up a website. So that was a great space for me to be able to just collate things, put all the white wines together with, 10 out of 10 scores so you know you can see what's what i've what i've gone through mm. and, and all of my tasting notes and links to to purchase um and that so then that you know i'm just building on that all the time but once i had the website then that kind of just gave me more um i guess drive and opportunity to to add to it so i i have you know include like a weekly blog post in there and that's not necessarily about drinks as, as much as it's more about the sober challenges that we all face and um, just things that pop up in my life that I, I think are, are relatable and worth sharing. Um, and, and the other part of this journey is, of course, um, having options when you go out. So I'm an incredibly social person myself. Um, and I haven't stopped being social since I've stopped drinking. And so I still like to go out a lot with my girlfriends, especially eating. <laughs> we go out an awful lot. Um, and very quickly I realized, or I mean, I already knew from the time when I was pregnant that you're essentially on soda water or soft drink or juice. Um, if you're lucky, you know, a, 
a, a restaurant may have a mocktail, which I'm not a massive rap for. Um, so I just started asking um, if I was allowed to bring a, a bottle of wine with me as a BYO sort of option um, and just testing that out a lot, both here in, in Port Ferry where I live and in Melbourne when I was visiting Melbourne and, and just having really mixed reactions to that. Um, but through my experience of doing that, I decided that that was information worth sharing. So I set up uh, the Squeaky Wheel, which is a resource on the website, which um, has tips and tricks for talking to hospitality and starting those conversations and how to approach it best and just everything that I've experienced along the way. And I also have set up a venue register of venues for across the whole country that do have alcoholic options and that ranges from you know a beer or two through to a, a really good full alcohol free list um and that's something that, that the community can add to so there's a, a form where you can submit and pop that in there and it's it's amazing how much that's grown that's incredible so yeah there's wow listings in every state and territory and it's just you're growing all the time so it's it's awesome it's so heartening and it's and so it's good. more and more venues are, are taking it up and and running with it just all the time yeah it's amazing it feels like such a huge wave where you know the options are just getting more and more even in such a short space of time since i've been not drinking in 2021 but yeah it's incredible advocacy you're doing there and also must be encouraging venues to start adding extra options especially if they're welcoming big groups you know the chances of having someone who's pregnant in the group and missing out on that booking is quite high so there's certainly incentive for venues to start exploring some of the great options that are out there as well and you're kind of making it much easier yeah, well, I'm trying. Some, I mean, some people you speak to are just, no, nah, they don't care, they don't, they, they don't see the value in it, they're, they're not open to it, but, you know, then they're missing out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. That's when, yeah, they're missing out on the business as well. Yeah. And um, how about your journey to becoming sober and starting all of this research? Um, how long have you been not drinking and how did that all come about? Uh, so I stopped drinking in June of last year, early June, the, the long weekend, uh, when we were, actually we were out of lockdown at that stage and that's I think why, why I, <laughs> I went crazy because we it was my actually, it was my first um, lunch back out of lockdown. And I yeah, was just, freedom day. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited and it was a long lunch and it just turned into a long, long, longer lunch and you know, I was blacked out by four thirty, five o'clock in the afternoon and we had house guests and I just it was just a, a shocking experience um, for everyone except for me because I wasn't really there. <laughs> um, and that was sort of a line in the sand moment for me. It had been building up to that for quite a, a long time. Um, a few years prior, I'd been through our local drug and alcohol counseling program and I'd been through that a couple of times um, after various alcohol related injuries. I think I, I'd had a broken arm once after being at a Bruce Springsteen concert. Um, and you know, that was like, right, this is a wake up call. You're a mother, you have a one year old daughter, you got a broken arm, what are you doing? Went through the drug and alcohol counseling, sort of got taught to moderate and, and cut back and that never worked and you know you cut back for a little while and then it just everything builds back up and slips back in and you forget about moderating and you forget about the extra water in between the drinks and it's just but you're back to where you started again so I did, I did that twice and both times never even thought of stopping drinking as an option because alcohol was such a massive part of my life like I, I I did I did get pointed at one time to Annie Grace's program and I listened to her first podcast where she talks about the freedom of quitting alcohol and ha having the best of both worlds and and I was like this lady is just crack it's like what's she on about quitting alcohol yeah, no <laughs> it's not a thing I just it was such a um important part of my life and and my identity like it was 
I was I I was always the drunkest and I always drank the fastest and it, and it was but it was part of even though negative things happened I, I still kind of viewed that as part of an integral part of who I was and how I was viewed um, but yeah so it really took that time being coming out of lockdown but firstly being in lockdown and probably drinking more as a lot of people experienced and then um, coming out of that experience and just being like, right, that's it. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I've got to stop. And that is when I did, I did pick up the Annie Grace program and did her 30 day online free program. Um, and haven't really looked back. Amazing. It was, yeah. Yeah. I also listened to her, um, an audio book, which was like 30 day alcohol experiment when I first stopped quitting. Yes. Well, yep. at the start, I didn't even know that I was planning to quit in, um, around new years. I just thought I need a good break after all this socializing post lockdown. Yep. Um, but it was actually really powerful for me as well in terms of reframing some of those ideas around, you know, the only way to have fun is with alcohol and, um, the, yeah, just some of the, the way that alcohol is on a pedestal and all special occasions and all these sort of fun moments, but then also a way to relax and to help to sort of challenge some of those ingrained ideas that you really need to mm -hmm. confront when thinking about doing things differently, I guess. Yeah, it's incredible. Like the the looking back on it, it all seems so simple, and what what she puts in front of you and challenges you with, it's like, oh, this all makes perfect sense. I was such a muppet to, you know, <laughs> to not to not see all this, but you you have to such blinkers on. Yeah, totally. Well, all, mm. all the other um, information, like the marketing and, you know, everyone else drinking and posting about having a great time on socials, it's all around us. So um, yeah. it's sort of like, find, I guess, finding those alternate views in amongst the the kind of popular opinion, I guess, is the, yeah. the important part. Yeah. Well, I mean, alcohol really is the only drug that you have to, you know, defend yourself for not, not taking, which yeah. is just incredible. <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. It is that is a really interesting way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that surprised you about um, not drinking? What it, like? What have you learned, or what what's um what's come about since you stopped drinking that you never expected? Uh, I never expected that I'd be able to keep socialising and have as much fun as I do. I think I, I probably go out and do things more now than what I did when I was drinking because I've not got the constant guilt cycle and, you know, Amy stuffed up again. So I'm going to sit, stay at home and make up for it. And um, so that, that's, Amazing. that's been awesome. Like I love just being able to do everything guilt free now. It's incredible. So good. Mm. Yeah. Like the yeah. weight of guilt was real. <laughs> Amazing. And your family must notice that change as well. Do you think that um, that's sort of changing your relationships at home as well? Uh, yes, that, that's that been the other, that's the really the, the biggest change for me is seeing how much impact it was having on my family really without me realising. I always thought that when my husband and I were arguing about my drinking that he was just trying to be controlling and, you know, what does he know? But it really was having an, a massive impact on both him and my and my daughter um and it's like he can he can let go and he can breathe now because he's not worried about me disappearing or ending up in hospital again or any of those things or you know doing even just doing something stupid within the home or just being angry drunk angry because i was getting really drunk angry yeah yep and, and and the relationship with my daughter is just like on another plane now. We're, we're just so much more like connected and um, because of my attention and my focus is with her now, it's not, I'm not bathing her and having a, a sneaky wine on the side and really actually paying attention to that. Um, I'm 100% present all the time and it just yeah, it makes such a big difference and we're so much closer now and it's it's just awesome 
Wow, that's so incredible. As you hear about how, I guess, parents, almost you're copying all of that marketing around or conversation around um, having a wine to kind of take the edge off some of the parenting duties as well. So it's really yeah. interesting to hear a counter view to that as well. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, you, you've, got, you've, got to, you've got to deal with how tough it is being a parent sometimes. And, but I think it, it actually, when you're not drinking, you have more capacity to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. You're not escaping those. from your problems by just drinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, processing difficult emotions and dealing with the situations as they unfold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. And in your sober toolkit, like um, beside alcoholic drinks, are there any other things that you kind of turn to for fun, escape or um, to wind down when you might have previously had a drink? My bath. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I am like such a fish now. I have a bath so often because it's just like that. Oh, you're putting a full stop on whatever's going on and you I can put a podcast on and just chill out and I'm just that's yeah it's really my bath is my big one yeah amazing so relaxing yes incredible and just you know getting nice salts and it feels like a treat every time even though it's just having a bath <laughs> <laughs> yeah, incredible. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take before you started to feel really relaxed without a drink? Like I imagine probably in the early days it might have felt a bit edgy to lie in a bath or at least it probably did for me um, where, you know, those moments where I'd sit down on the couch at the end of the day and I would try and relax but normally there would be a drink in the equation. It took mm -hmm. some time perhaps to move into this kind of new space of comfort and ease. Mm -hmm. It's something that I think I still struggle with a little bit and it's something that I'm actually like working on with my um, psychologist at the moment because I because I've sort of lost an off switch with with alcohol I have to sort of make time now to do activities that serve me in that way and so like there's certain activities that I can do like painting or or a really good cooking session, for example, where my brain actually does kind of switch off and I, I'm entirely focused on on what I'm doing. Mm. Um, and being able to take time and do those things is, is really important for me now because it is the only time when I'm not, like, you know, thinking 10 steps ahead to, you know, life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yep, finding that off switch. And then that will those mm. activities will probably also be training your presence as well, like the way you were saying you're so present with your daughter. Like some of those things that you're doing will probably not, you know, not only do you have the effect of not having alcohol as a distraction, you're also replacing it with that other types of mindful activities that are building that capacity. Yeah. It's really cool. It, yeah, it is. And it, it was quite a, a, a shock to me really to work that out, like because I've been having quite a stressful year and I'm just on, 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 on all the time. She's like, what are you doing to switch off? And I'm like, bath. Yeah. <laughs> like you need more than a bath to switch off. I'm like, okay. So what are the things that you could do where you really feel like you kind of relax and you get into the, the groove of just doing? And that's, yeah, what I've worked out. So yeah, nice. it's, it's cool to find those things. And, you know, like exercise is good for it as well, but, I, you know, I, it's, I don't think it's in the same bucket for me. Yeah, I um, I was running a lot when I first quit, but it was almost like that pushing, it wasn't an enjoyable wind down activity. Yeah. That pushing was almost like pushing through the craving, like pushing yeah, through yeah. some difficult run yeah. <laughs> together in one go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. And then sleep-wise, do you feel like you're getting more rested overnight and sleeping okay? Like are you able to yeah. switch off without the alcohol at night? Yeah, 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 definitely. And oh, and don't miss those 3 a.m. wake-ups. Did you have the 3 a.m. wake-ups? Um, I've got a you know, cat that always this. wakes us up She's... in the night, oh. <laughs> so I still get some <laughs> <laughs> overnight wake-ups. But I bet you can go straight back to sleep. Yeah, nothing, true. Nothing like that lying there for like two hours like while your body's just like <sighs> processing alcohol. 
not cool. Not yeah, good. true. This is so true. <laughs> and um, I really want to also tap into your expertise while we've got you around your favourite non-alcoholic options. Um, is there any particular things you've been enjoying at the moment? I noticed you've been drinking a lot of sparkling uh, champagne based type <laughs> drinks on your socials. <laughs> yeah, I did a whole like week of, I set myself a challenge to review as many bubbles as I could in a week. Um, so that was a lot. <laughs> It was a lot of champagne. Amazing. Um, look, I'm still challenging myself all the time to try and find this elusive good red wine. Um, <laughs> I have found that uh, Lindemann's Cab Sav is, uh, in my opinion, I think it's the best non-out red wine, but well, the best that I've tried because it's actually got a bit of, like, body and robustness to it. Um, I'm really enjoying the beers. Awesome. Yeah, all like these Aussie made craft beers. And I mean, I never drank craft beer when I was drinking real beer because it was too, too much like a meal in a glass to me, really. It was like just too much flavor and it was, I just wasn't interested at all. But like, I think my entry point was heaps normal. And from there, I'm just like, wow, this stuff is amazing. So there's, yeah cool stuff coming out of like all these like bre local breweries like molly um rose and the bridge road brewers and they're all coming out with these intensely good ipas and all sorts of things and so that's cool for me discovering a whole new world yeah really. a whole new drinks category yeah. it's awesome. yeah it is it's cool and and i really find the spirits to be a really interesting space as well because they're all like when with alcohol like I don't know to me gin's gin like it it, it tastes I mean I've never really drank spirits so I didn't really know that the difference but to me gin was gin whereas you know non-alc gins every single one is totally different and they're all unique and they're all amazing and you ha can have a lot of fun like playing around with them trying different kinds of tonics and um they're incredible o ovant from um margaret river is they they've got a range of three different spirits and their grace is just mind-blowing so good like amazing Incredible. I'm definitely going to taste that. I've only just started getting into the non alc spirits maybe the last few weeks. Um, mm. So, yeah, there's, it feels like there's a whole new world of drinks to try. It's just kind yeah. of opening. Yeah. It's, it is a whole new world because it, it, you're not really comparing it to anything. Whereas when you're having a non-alcoholic sparkling wine, you're constantly just chasing the, the experience that you know. Mm. which is good for some things like I love having a glass of champagne any time well you know like with a meal or at a social event or anything but like when it comes to making yourself a t tasty drink at home or if you're lucky when you're out it's cool to have these new experiences and try these really new things yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's awesome to have those things to fill the gap like i was reading just the other day that jlo is sober but she like puts champagne in her glass and has like the tiniest sip when she has to toast things because you know you can't toast with water and it's like yeah. it's actually not needed anymore no. like those kinds of desperate moments um we we've got so many options coming through but it's all quite quite new yes that's crazy so yeah. needs to get jlo some naughty <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally yes. <laughs> that one looks amazing actually as well mm. yes it is it's incredible and their so their their sparkling rosé has just arrived in australia we have it's a newer product oh, wow. and, um so that's exciting mine's winging its way to me as we speak so i'm very excited to try that because yeah they're the their sparkling's just it's so nice yeah incredible mm. you must mm. get to taste so many things in your line of work um <laughs> <laughs> they do backlog they do. like things coming it's lucky i'm a liquid pig <laughs> <laughs> i love that phrase that might be even better than connoisseur <laughs> <laughs> i am definitely a liquid pig i have a giant cup of tea and water and something else 
going on at all times. So, so good. <laughs> now, now those drinks are all hydrating you. So it's like I a, know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> a huge change. And um, I was wondering as well, now that you're sober, do you notice more people out there who are sober too? Like, do you have new, new connections because of this space? And um, what are you thinking in terms of social side of things? Uh, I definitely, it's interesting. So in terms of like my immediate kind of group of friends, I'm the only sober person, but I've definitely made so many connections just through my Instagram account and made friends with people all across the country, um, some of whom I've been lucky enough to meet in person already. Um, but it's also interesting, like I, mean, I guess living in a small town, and I've put myself out there in my small town, so everyone knows what I'm doing here. You can't go anywhere without someone wanting to talk to you about this and talk to you about their experiences with alcohol and how they feel about it. And, you know, they've given up for a month or, you know, the amount of people that I've found out that, that are not drinking, that I didn't even know about, mm. is just, and it's been really awesome to to experience and it, it turns out that people really do have a lot of feelings about their relationships with alcohol but we don't talk about it mm. yeah that's i think is why it's so important to share these stories as well like yeah. that's really what inspired me to start this series in a way um when i started posting a few things about stopping drinking on my own socials mm -hmm. the number of messages that i got and still get from people just privately though like not as comments necessarily yeah. on the messages but just coming through around their own experiences makes me feel like it's such an important and powerful topic to discuss um you know for anyone whether or not they're sober that um just to put our own stories out there as a, a counter to some of the mainstream narratives around the fact that we need booze all the time yeah absolutely it's it's so important i mean it's just so pervasive like i really noticed uh recently especially watching tv shows um especially ones that are female focused they like literally you can't watch an episode without someone having alcohol they've always got a glass of wine in their hand and that's just where we've got to yeah and you notice it so much as well oh. um once you stop like previously i guess i guess i knew it was everywhere but you just don't think about it as much mm. it's just accepted as the normal yeah um, I, seri yeah. series one of dead to me i watched as a drinker and didn't notice how much they were drinking. Series two, I watched in my early sobriety and I was like, holy hell, they're drinking a lot of wine all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, you just really, really notice it. Mm, yeah, yeah, yep. It's amazing, isn't it? And all these sort of like feminist icons as well, mm -hmm. talking about um, messages of female empowerment with a wine in their hand. I find a, I really notice that type of stuff as well. And it makes sense in a way. It's like liquid courage and it is strength and it's been marketed to us as independence and relaxation and power and all the things that we crave mm -hmm. um, that it's, yeah, it's just become so pervasive in that yeah. sort of space for women and actually it, it takes away all our power really alcohol like yeah. i really didn't know until i got rid of it that how much it had taken away by the things that you think it's giving you like you you have them all yourself mm. like you have the, the the courage and the 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 confidence and the you know all those things like that you thought that alcohol was giving you when you remove it you realize that that was you all along yeah yeah it's incredible yeah that's, that's so cool to realize as well mm -hmm. um yeah i love it and if you're thinking about you know anyone who's interested in having some time off or cutting back or quitting booze are there any sort of things that we haven't talked about that you would want to share from your own journey or learnings uh, I think reading is definitely really good. I think, like you mentioned, Annie Grace's book, uh, I think a book, um, Quit Like a Woman, I found to be incredibly mm. empowering and awesome. That was, um, you know, especially speaking from like a feminist perspective, it was amazing. <laughs> but and, and in my early days, I found podcasts immersing myself in podcasts and listening to other people's stories to be the most helpful thing because that made me 
realized that I wasn't alone and my story was not unique in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Do you have any favorites mm. podcasts? I haven't really delved into that space that much yet. So I'm really curious. Um, I was listening to a lot of Annie Grace's podcasts because she just has people on, you know, like you or me and telling their stories. Mm, yeah, um, nice. And one that I have just picked up, well, it's only a fairly new one, is called um, Sober Awkward. That's two um, British chicks who live up on the Sunshine Coast and they're just hilarious. They're just total ex-trash bags. And they're talk, just talking about their experiences. Um, they're both at separate kind of part, places in their journey. Um, one is like three years sober and one is about 10 months sober. And it's just yeah, their life experiences. So that's that's definitely one to listen to. And Danny Carr, she has one called um, "How I How I Quit Alcohol," and that that that's that's really great as well. She has some amazing guests on there. There's oh, definitely cool. a lot. Yeah, that's that's an awesome little list. And I loved Holly Whitaker's book, Quit Like a Woman, as well. I feel like the title's a bit deceiving. Like I've recommended it to a few male friends. Um, and it's <laughs> I think it would still be okay in a sense. It's really um talking about that the way that alcohol kind of um the alcohol industry um takes away power and sort mm -hmm. of reclaiming that, um, which can be useful for women, marginalized communities, or anyone really who's finding it a challenge. It's sort of Great, yeah, a great um, piece of work there. Yeah, love it. Yeah, love it too. Um, thank you so much, Amy. That was such a great conversation. I really value all your insights and wisdom and um, the way you've shared so openly as well, your story. And, um, yeah, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. It's lovely. <laughs> Excellent. So nice to be invited. <laughs>